Hey everyone, today we're looking at perks that change their effect entirely. These are perks for the most part where if you place the two effects side by side, the two would be unrecognisable as the same perk, fulfilling different roles to their original versions. Let me know your thoughts as always, down below. We're Gonna Live Forever is a perk that changed from its BP grinding use into a heavily team focused and altruism based perk. Back in its release in 2017, it had the simple effect giving you a 50% bonus to BP gains for each survivor you took a hit for or rescued, up to a maximum of 200%. This was then nerfed down to 25% stacks and a maximum of 100% over the years, and largely remained this way for quite some time. It was only in October 2020 when it got its first effect, essentially, where prior it was literally just a BP bonus as a perk. This was to bring it in line with Barbecue and Chili, the killer side version of this perk, which at the time too also had an additional effect as well as BP gains. In July 2022, it was decided that perks that gave additional BP would start to be removed from the game, as the BP system was being refined. This came with a final adjustment and overall buff I would say to the perks effect. Nowadays it increases your healing speed by 100% on survivors in the dying state. It also grants tokens for altruistic actions. These tokens grant endurance for 10 seconds to survivors healed out of the dying state. It's sort of a earnable soul guard you can place onto others. And if you remove the name, these two effects side by side would be unrecognisable as the same perk. Tinkerer was a perk that released with the base game, and like a lot of stuff back then, it was pretty different to how it is now. Back then, this perk gave the interesting effect of changing the effectiveness of charge time add-ons for killer powers, making them 15% more effective. This meant for characters like Billy, with his old carburetor tuning guide and primer bulb, he would be able to rev his saw even faster than what was already possible with the base add-on on effects. Characters like Huntress could also ready her hatchets extremely quickly when running Flower Babushka and Mana Grass Braid, which led to Machine Gun Huntress, where she could just wind and throw the hatchets extremely quickly. This was clearly a problem, not just because of the strength, but because of the fact that it had very strong or overpowered effects on some characters, but on others it did basically nothing. As you can imagine, not every killer is charge time focused with their power. The perk then did a complete change. I would argue the biggest change or alteration a perk has gone through, with the perk becoming a stealth perk. When a generator hit a certain percentage of completion, you'd now get a duration of undetectable. Or back in the day, it was actually just a reduction to your terror radius, because undetectable didn't exist yet. Regardless, it was a big change, and the perk after a few tweaks is still very good, and far less problematic than its original version. One unfortunate aspect of this perk in my opinion is that it kind of took away an aspect of Billy, his tinkering. Before, the perk was meant to frame him as tinkering with the powers and weapons, but with the new version, I guess you could say he tweaks the generators? I don't know. Small Game was a perk introduced with the base game, being one of the original universal perks for survivors. This perk was interesting, and played into a theme that was later slowly removed over time, which is killer-specific interactions. In the case of Small Game, it originally only worked to locate trappers' bear traps, revealing them when nearby to them with an aura. This was okay, and actually pretty strong at the time of its release, when there were just three killers. However, as time went on, this clearly became a problem. It was altered, moving away from auras and changing to give an auditory cue instead when you were nearby and looking at a trap. It also began to work on different traps such as Hag's Phantasms per her release and later Freddy's Dream Palettes post his rework. It was an interesting direction, but ultimately it was a little unfair to be so specific to just these killers and do nothing else for others. So it got reworked and lost all these effects, instead now working to locate totems. It kept the same effect somewhat of giving an auditory cue when in range, and also some benefits for successfully finding totems, narrowing your detection radius so you could more accurately locate totems. This was actually pretty useful too at the peak of the Hex meta, but is undeniably unrecognisable from its original state. Hex Ruin does still have the same goal of regressing generators, however the way it goes about it is entirely different. The perk released with Hag and was one of three Hexes to be introduced. Originally, this perk would alter generators to have red skill checks. If you hit the skill check in the good part, it would regress it by 5%. 
you could only avoid regression by hitting the great part, which gave you 0% regression, so no change basically. This meant you had to always hit the great part, or the generator kept regressing every skill check. This was changed largely I think due to newer players struggling with it. It was a perk you saw in pretty much every game back then, and was the main thing used for slowdown. Upon its change it was altered to kind of an equally broken state, but largely different state too. Instead of punishing you for working on the generator, it would punish you for not working on the generator. If you stopped working on a generator, with Ruin active, it would instantly begin regressing at 200% regression rate, which would absolutely shred the generator. The two perk effects are really lacking in similarity to one another really. Later of course Ruin was nerfed down to 100% regression, or base regression rate, which basically ruined the perk. I've always loved this perk rework because of all the discourse surrounding it. No one seems to quite agree on which version was stronger, which I honestly like. It's an interesting conversation. <laughs> Buckle Up is a perk that for a long time had one of the most bizarre but also quite unique effects. It made it so you could see the progression of a survivor's recovery in the dying state, with a gradient aura that went from white to red, based on how much progress they had made recovering. You'd also get a brief aura effect. Nowadays of course that's kind of irrelevant, what with it showing it on the screen for everyone, and this seems to be why it got its rework to begin with. Its original change made it so when you healed someone out of the dying state it'd give them a haste bonus, and you'd both see the killer's aura briefly. Its final and current version makes it so after picking up someone from the dying state, it grants you and the person you healed with endurance, and you see the killer's aura for 10 seconds. It's quite a change from the largely information focused version it used to have, and nowadays it's actually kind of meta depending on your build and circumstances. It's also a little sad because the old gradient of the aura changing colour to indicate how far through an action someone was, was quite interesting, and I kind of wish stuff like this would be incorporated more somehow. I'm not sure how, but I really like the concept, even though in that instance it was pretty useless, admittedly. This perk did remain focused around the dying state, but it changed a lot, from an information focused perk, into sort of a second chance clutch perk. Dying Light is a perk that has undeniably changed a lot in terms of its goals. Nowadays it aims to get you to hook as many times as possible, and get an increasing slowdown applied onto the other side giving a small buff to the obsession. Old Dying Light released with the introduction of Myers, and basically wanted you to tunnel the obsession out of the game. One of the first and last perks to do this. The obsession started out with a 50% bonus to altruistic speeds, which I think is unhooking and healing. This is all the perk did until you sacrificed the obsession. So it was a perk that literally just buffed the other side until you took one of the survivors out. When the obsession was gone, the perk would apply a 25% reduction to healing, repair, and sabotage speeds for the remaining three survivors. This is bizarre, I think, but I think the goal with this was that survivors would likely be using Decisive Strike, which also came out with this chapter, and so this would even out the goal of taking out the obsession. An interesting idea, I think, but ultimately changed for the best. It would later be reworked to its current state, where it does still buff the obsession, however now it specifically stipulates you need the obsession alive to keep the effects of the perk. So they basically just flip the requirements a bit to stop tunneling and also make the perk a little more worthwhile in regular gameplay. Left Behind is a perk I want to cover, and mainly for the philosophy behind the perk. It may be more recognisable between others in terms of effects here, but they are still starkly different things, even if they both activate in the endgame. Original Left Behind tried to get you to do generators when you were the last survivor remaining. I've always found this really funny. <laughs> I can just imagine someone trying to grind through every generator with this perk as the last alive. Although it is worth remembering back then you needed to do at least two generators before the hatch spawned, so it could help in some cases. It feels like something that could be okay as a base game mechanic, but it's slightly bizarre, I think. This percentage was then later increased to 75%, which is quite sizable, and actually makes it relatively possible, I think, to get the gens done with some careful stealth. The perk was eventually changed, of course, to its current state, where it now reveals the hatch's aura instead in a 32 meter range, and I think this was after the hatch was changed. As much as this is more useful than the original version, I don't like it nearly as much. In fact, it's one of my least favourite perks currently in the game for 
for the survivor side because it's so boring I think. And also you can hear the hatch. Furtive Chase is our final perk today and sort of the reason I made the video. This perk was released on the year 3 anniversary with Ghostface and had one of the game's strangest effects. The goal of Furtive was to make you harder to track in Chase, I think. However it just never really worked, or at least not to a noticeable or effective degree. Every time you hooked the obsession you gained a token. Each token reduced your terror radius by 4 meters when in chase, to a maximum of 4 tokens or 16 meters. The obsession would also change each time they were saved, transferring onto whoever saved them. This is the one part of the perk that remains, and the best part I think. I always liked the idea of this perk, and I think it could have been strong if it affected you out of chase, or if the reduction was just a bit larger in chase, as often this reduction would do little for most characters, even at maximum stacks. It got changed very recently, and now is more of a stealth and movement based perk, to be used on the go, and to more easily surprise someone and enter a chase rather than to be used in chase. When you hook the obsession you get the undetectable status and 5% haste for 18 seconds. It's actually pretty okay, and it keeps the same obsession transferring ability too. Whilst the perk is entirely different and fulfills a completely different role, it's actually quite useful now and pretty worthwhile, keeping its unique obsession changing effect, but removing the strange core effect that made the perk bad to begin with. Alright well that's gonna do it, I do hope you enjoyed and let me know what you think of these perks and any others you would classify as entirely changed down below. Thanks and goodbye.